just the name, I think um, it's, and this is just practice in the city, is to um, have a, a title that's like resolution calling for civility throughout the city of Northampton or something along those lines. So it just needs a title and it needs a line that just um, says, using the, the usual language that we use for um, as recommended by or recommended by the Human Rights Commission. So those are just really, um, you know, kind of keeping with custom. Um, then really simple things, like I think the New York Times and Boston Globe need to be italicized. Scribner's things, is that true? You as an editor, Lori, would know better than I. Um, could you repeat that, Alisa? Just that New York Times and Boston Globe should be italicized. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, Do we need to come up with a, a title then? Well, I made a recommend, I, I mean, I, I wrote resolution calling for civility throughout the city of Northampton. Um, I like that, I like that. But yeah, I mean, I'll send this to you and you can do with it whatever. I mean, I guess we have, are we voting on this today? So we need to know with amendment. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I think what Malik suggested is great. Resolution calling for civility throughout the city of Northampton. Yeah, and this will be an attract changes document too, Joel. So, um, so on the one, two, three, four, fifth, whereas um, the last part of the the whereas says with people targeted by hate slurs when we witness them. So I just wanted to ask about this one. Um, we don't refer to these things as hate slurs before this point. And I don't know, I think they're referred to as bias motivated name calling and language. Um, and that's how they're defined. So I just want to make sure that that seems okay to everyone that there's not a consistency in the terms and how we're referring to them. It could be fine because I think it's self-evident what we're talking about, but um, I think technically kind of there should be some consistency in the language that we choose. But I, you know, I'm not attached to any of this. These are just things that I thought as I was looking it over. Yeah, I, I can I speak to that point? Go ahead, Lori. Um, I did that on purpose because I felt like it may not be a hate crime, but it's definitely hateful. And I figured, I also don't like to repeat words if I don't have, if, you, if I can avoid it. So, but if people think it should be changed, I'm fine with that too. I, I'm i totally fine with that. I just was inquiring. So mm -hmm. that sounds, that makes sense to me what you're saying. Um, and then in the, the first um, resolve, now therefore be it resolved that in this town it says, but Northampton's actually a city, city. so yeah, it should be city. Um, and I think that's all that I had. Um, that's all I had for the resolution. I have one question about the pledge. So I don't know if we're taking these separately or we should go down through the whole thing. Any other um, comments or questions about the wording of the resolution itself? Okay. I, I just want to say I like the term racist slurs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> slurs, is a, it's slurs is a good word. You know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We understand what you're saying. It just sounds weird. Yeah. Okay, for the pledge then. Comments? and questions about the pledge. So I think we need a motion to yeah, accept the amendments, and I'll get rid of the ones that we're not okay. addressing. So could you say again the title of this? Um, I have it here as resolution calling for civility throughout the city of Northampton. I so I if, it, sorry. I'm sorry? And I just said in front of civility. I mean, it might be implying that there is no civility in the campaign. So I don't know if like increased <laughs> civility or, or um, just sounds I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Greater civility? 
Right. Increase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean, that's what I thought increase. Um, I think what we're, our concern is because there's been an increase or there's been, people have become more aware of hateful speech. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually what we're addressing. So you're talking about awareness? Well, um, I'm, I don't think I'm for putting an adjective in front of a quote or an adverb in front of civility. Civility, I think, is a noun. Um, so I'm not for putting an adjective in front of it. I would say it's simply a call for civility. Yeah, I agree. I, I just I like the idea. Just be civil. That's what we're saying. Be civil. Um, I don't think we have this case it. But that, that's my thought too. I, but I, I mean, I'm not going to stop everything for it. But I, I just like calling for civility. Uh, to me, that's. I don't think you have to measure it. It, it rings. I like the the, the the sound of resolution calling for civility throughout the city of Northampton. And I think what you're saying is. Actually, there's always been elements of incivility in whatever that is. That's our secret of saying. Laura, your my account might knock you off in ten minutes, and if that happens, I will just re I'll open a new meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, but could you say more about why you think an adjective would be? Helpful? I don't know. I mean, I just like got the I don't know. Implying that there is no civility, you know. Like, I mean, I do see your point. There is a severity in it, but I don't know because you said you have the same thought. When I first read it, yeah, the original title, I thought the same thing because it seemed to be saying there was a lack of any civility, civility at all. But right. I also, after hearing your side, right, I do understand yeah. the seriousness of it. So saying like a call for civility because we are focusing on the fact that there's been a lack of it. So I do understand where you're coming from after hearing your side, but that was my initial yeah. thought when I first read it as well. Well, I think your views are important though because if this gets sent to the city, they haven't heard this discussion sure. of how we got here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm actually asking. Your, your, your fresh view is actually really useful. I'm listening to what all of you were saying, thinking about um, how this conversation started with, uh, with talking about one of the things that is in our power to do is try to shape the culture in the city of Northampton. Um, so I wonder if we make this a resolution supporting a culture of civility in Northampton, if that is aspirational while at the same time supporting what civility had and what um, structures have been in place in the city to support civil community up till now. So you said um, resolution supporting a culture of civility in the city of Northampton? I like that. Uh, we could also make it positive. One of the other things that's available to us as a committee is to invite participation. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be uh, positive and proactive, we can present it that way as uh, joining us, uh, join the, the commissioners as we all vow to um, take this pledge also. Morgan, sort of an invitation. Are you talking about the title now, Chris? I'm no. talking about uh, what you're saying is that, you know, yeah, I'm talking about, the, you know, uh, inviting people to, um, if this commission's one of our jobs or our opportunities is to shape the culture, mm -hmm. um, that is exactly what we're trying to do. 
you know, there's a lot of people who don't even know that this commission exists. And maybe it would be a good idea if we all to get out in the streets and like at a card table or something like that and go from place to we're place. Gonna, we're going to have a conversation about what we will do with the resolution once we get through the, um, once we vote on the actual acceptance. And I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I want to know if Booker's point, which is raised more than once, is that it's not the first period in our history of the city or anywhere else where there's been incivility. Um, how is it acknowledged that this is not a brand new concept? And the other, the other point I would make, we talked about this before, um, and I don't know where you guys did your research, but we're not the only people that have thought of this. There's a lot of it on college campuses. We're, we're also joining a movement of people who are trying to create uh, and shape the culture in their communities and on their campuses. I like a positive, like, ground swelling, we're all in this together kind of a feeling. I like your phrase um, about the culture of civility. It's hard to know whether people will feel you're implying there wasn't any civility before or whether they'll get that what we're saying is in these stressful times we would like to especially put this out. Well, I think the new wording kind of answers that. Because I think when you say resolution supporting a culture of civility, that's not assuming there is none. Whereas now I look back and it says calling for civility can lead you to believe there isn't any now. Some people may not think there is, but if you say supporting a culture of civility, maybe that kind of, you know, goes to that. Or to increase the level of civility well, this is where I would encourage inviting participation mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. movement. So perhaps in the last, um, be it further resolved, instead of calling upon people, we could invite invite people to join us. So will you mark that in your? So be further resolved that the Human Rights Commission invites all members of, right? Yep. And that's in the in the second one down of the further resolve. It's the last be it further resolved. Okay. Okay. So we still don't have a decision on the, the wind chimes on the porch of the camp. <laughs> Yeah, lovely wind chimes, Lori. I was going to say, are those your wind chimes going there, Lori? It's getting me. She can't hear them because she's going to have headphones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't she hear us? No, <laughs> I, I'm dreading that. Lori, are you able to hear us? She, she's walking awesome. away from the wind chimes. I don't know. It doesn't seem like she can hear us. Can you hear us, Lori? You know, the truth is the only person I can hear is Karen. Okay. That's the most important one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that, the last phrase mm -hmm. as the heading. The, okay, so, so the, the supportive? Yeah, okay. So Lori, we're thinking about um, uh, the, calling it a resolution, calling for the support of what did I, oh, I, I had a resolution support, supporting the culture. culture right. of of the civility in the city of Northampton. Resolution supporting the, a culture of civility in I the city of I think it should be the because that so refers to the fact that it already exists. Yes. Yes. As opposed to a. Uh. Okay. Heidi, any uh, feedback about that, Lori? Sounds good. Okay. Okay. And the only other significant change, well, semi significant change, was in the final be it resolved, instead of calling on all members of the community, we're inviting all members of the community to join us in this pledge. Oh yeah, that's much more, much friendlier. Okay. And the line below the title upon the recommendation of the Human Rights Commission, just so that we write that on record. Yeah.
right, so any final discussion, um, comments or questions about the language of the resolution or the pledge? Well, the pledge, are we talking about the pledge too? Oh, have we, we well, actually began that, but have we Do we need finished? to approve the resolution and then go to the pledge? So the only thing that, um, well, there, there's a Scribner's thing. It sh the word on is missing in the pledge. So uh, from disparaging other people based who they are is what it says right now. So there just needs to be an on there. Yeah. Um, and I just, I know that we talked about this a lot at the last meeting, this concept of standing by and supporting and whatever, but I, I guess maybe we settled on standing by, but that to me means you're just a bystander and it doesn't imply you're necessarily active or engaged or anything. And I wonder if we're, we're trying to speak about solidarity more, it should be standing with. Um, Laura, you couldn't get, hear that? Okay. Okay. All right, um, Elise was um, in the final uh, part of the pledge where it says uh, we will refrain from disparaging other people based on who they are and standing by those who are targets. Uh, the question is whether standing by is too connotative of a bystander and whoops, that's the end of the free Zoom meeting. Let's see if we can just pop her right up again. I used my own account instead of my work account, and it had a limit on the number of minutes, apparently. All right, well, while we're waiting for her, you're talking about change the wording from standing by to? Standing with. Okay. And just because I think it implies um, solidarity, whereas standing by can be not very clear in that way. It can be a passive bystander. I agree completely. Yeah. I think it's a, I agree. I think it's a good change. Mm -hmm. For those of you who weren't here, we spent a lot of time arguing about this phrase. <laughs> because what did it mean to support the person who might be a recipient of uh, hate speech or uh, offensive behavior? And I think some of us were concerned about, we weren't sure what it, would people know what to do to stand by something, watching something happen. Um, and did we want to give a charge to people that we couldn't define, you know, what it looked like? And there's this whole question of how much training does one need to have in order to interfere in ways that are safe for everybody and all kinds of questions like that. If anyone has Lori's phone number. Uh, I, she's texting me. Okay. I told her you're fixing it. Okay. It's the meeting's open so she can try and log in. Is that the only change you had or? Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, let me, actually I think it's a different number. So Christine, if you would go ahead. Tell me what it is and I'll. Nine oh two oh one six nine five one three. No, that is the same number. Okay. Have we heard from Brian as long as we're waiting? No? I have not, so I'm going to ask the mayor's office to. So back, but I, you can't see me this time. No, but we, we still believe it's you. <laughs> you, you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Do you hear okay. us? Okay. Okay. So I just missed the end of what you said, um, but. Okay. So the, 
Yes, the idea is um, whether when by using the words um, standing by those who are targets, it is con connotative of a bystander. And we had talked uh -huh. at a recent meeting, and so someone suggested standing with. Okay. Instead of standing by. It's a small. That is fine with me. Okay. Are there any other comments while I was doing the technology thing? Okay. I would entertain a motion then to approve this resolution and pledge, if there's one offered. Based on the change of discussion? As amended, as amended in this Okay, case. I just want to make sure we have the right Thank you. changes. Yeah. Do you want me to figure out what I've got on here? I think you can oh, use it. Okay, okay, good. So moved. Thank you, Dina. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Lori, do you approve? I care. Uh, yeah. Do you um, do you want to vote? Do you approve the uh, the resolution and pledge as amended this evening? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, now we get to have a conversation about what we will do with this. Lori and Joel, have you, um, I know that you have given us some ideas here. Did you have any uh, any plan or proposal that you particularly want us to begin with? I, can I just say a couple of things? Yeah. Yeah, please. Um, can, you, can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, here's the thing I feel concerned about is I think this has the, great potential to be something that is completely ridiculed and that people's you know cynicism will come out so I you know that that'll just put out there uh, that I think we should be prepared for that and um, you know I just think that's sort of the state of the world right now but um, I guess I feel like the first thing that would be good to do would be to bring it to the City Council and get key leaders to sign on and if there is that um, kind of response that we acknowledge it and you know, you know, don't try to defend against it, but that's just my thought. Who do you imagine the kind of pushback coming from, and in what form, Lori? Just wondering. Lori, I'm sorry. The question is, um, do you have? someone in mind who do you imagine would be pushing back on this who, who would be what pushing back on or giving a cynical response to this uh nobody in particular just the whole idea of political correctness i think people will say like this is northampton you're so precious you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. I, I'm now, sure. in, in the same way that you know um there was mocking about the high pride high five friday right. reconsideration of that decision that's what I mean. Right. I'm sure there will be letters to the editor or whatever, but I mean, I, I, I think the worst thing we can do is try and argue it. You know, I think if here's what it is, here's what we believe in. I agree completely that we need to present to the city council. Mm -hmm. I think that, that will bring a lot, and, you know, those who want to embrace it, we welcome that, we support it. What can we do to help? And those that, want to ridicule it that's fine too I mean that kind of speaks up to the point where okay let's just be civil about it yeah um, thank you thanks one thing that we could do is to ask for co-sponsors if we um, would like to ask some city councilors if they would like to co-sponsor this um, and Elisa tell me is it is it done in the city that non city entities can co-sponsor a resolution? Um, the furthest I've seen, I mean, not private organizations or anything like that, but uh, like if the high schools, whatever committee you wanted to, we would consider something like that. Or the faith communities? I don't think that we have done that. I think these are kind of um, products of city bodies. I mean, I don't know for 100% sure, but I've never seen one in my almost 
almost four years on the council. Yeah, I don't remember seeing one either. Um, okay. Do we have a timeline of when we would like to go public with this? Well, I'm wondering if it could be useful to, um, Lori, can you hear me at all? No, I, no, I can't. I just can you hear me now? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just wondering if you have concern that there's going to be kind of um, repercussions from people in the city to launch this at the same time as we get something in the Gazette, some kind of op-ed or something that kind of explains why we're doing it. I mean, that could actually yeah. inflame things more, but at least we would have a little bit more space to have a say about what the thinking behind it was. Yeah. Or but that could, requires a whole other level of preparation, so it's that's something to think about. But, I mean, I, I just want, that's just my thought. Other people might not think we will get that pushback, so I, I don't want to put a, you know, damper on things. But I also feel like another option would be to write something if that does happen. I like the idea. Um, it feels to me all of us have had the experience of being in situations where somebody says something and you're so sort of dumbfounded you don't know what to say. And as soon as you leave the situation, you think of eight things you wish you'd say. And I'd like to, I just wonder if this could open some kind of conversation, whether in an article or whatever, of, of I and mean, I think all of us need a sort of phrase that when we hear things that are not okay, we can say. And that it, a sort of, so to develop some of those and whatever feels comfortable to you, it, it, I just wonder if that's a way to, it's part of a conversation we could have from this. It's certainly a companion piece to go with this, is that I think this needs to be tested a little. Yeah. Lori, can you hear me? Uh, well, no, didn't no. Davina just say something? <laughs> Can you tell me what Davina said? Yes, she, um, can you help me wrap that up? In yes, um, should I shout? Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, the microphone's on this side. Okay, here comes Davina. Um, okay. I, I just, I like the idea of this starting a conversation for us all to be better prepared, whether it's here, whether it's in an article, whether it's however, so that a, a, a greater number of us are sort of better prepared when you do hear uh, comments that upset you, um, that you're prepared and have something to say. I think I was saying, I think we've all been in that situation where you hear a, a, an off-color joke or an anti-Semitic comment or a racist remark, and you're sort of dumbfounded. And if you have, if you're, an, uh, as soon as you turn around and leave, you think, oh, I wish I'd said this, 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 and this. And if you have something ready, I found it something, e it's, it's a little easier. Yeah. You're talking about a, a toolkit for Are the bystander. Are in the uh, resolution at all? A toolkit for the bystander. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I wonder if that exists already. I wonder if um, a better staffed and resourced organization than us might have such a toolkit already. I know, Lori, you looked at some college campus materials. Is that right? You know, the Southern Poverty Law Center has a, something like that. It's a 10 point, it's a little bit broader than what we're talking about, mm -hmm. but I can look at that. Okay. I have something to say more. Okay. Um, Christine's coming to talk to you. Yeah, just from Googling that, there's there's a lot. Yeah. Hey, Lori. Hey. So I have this feeling that the resolution should be uh, tested, air, air, air tested. Um, and I think that taking it to the city council will be the first real um, blowback or uh, whatever feedback feedback that we get on this and I yeah. feel like 
I feel like we shouldn't rush to get it out. I think that we should have a toolkit for bystanders. I think we should have a way of presenting it to the public that's exciting and fun. And I think that we should go to people who we think would willingly participate. We have never partnered with faith communities or something of that nature, but I would think that we would invite people who we think might be people who really support this concept to okay. join with us. Yeah. So this makes me think about timing again. Um, and we did mention at another uh, at a previous conversation that it might be good to see if the school department, if the individual elementary, middle, and high schools wanted to uh, to ask invite their students to engage in this as well. This is not the time to start engaging at public school students. They're on their way out the door almost. Um, so I'm wondering if a September launch is, does, does, do people feel a greater sense of urgency? I mean, there is always a sense of urgency um, given the state of the world. Well, are, are, we, are we jumping it a little bit? In other words, what about the idea of, of getting the input of the city council? You know, to present this to the city council, see what they, you know, and then get their input of, okay, our next step with this, if you like it and all, is to roll it out. And, you know, I mean, they're representing the community. They might have some good input of, you know, well, when, a, when a good time is. I, you know, I don't know that, I, I, maybe are we putting the cart before the horse here? Do we, let's, let's get this in front of the city council and say this is what we want to do. I don't know, it's just a thought. I mean, Lisa, you know more than me. Yeah, I think if you um, introduce it on the council floor, you're, that's getting it out there because we usually do get some press coverage at the meetings, and so it's essentially equivalent to making it public, like, you know, putting it public. Then do we need to do a letter to the editor simultaneously with going to the city council meeting? Because you're saying once it's at the city council meeting, it is essentially public. Yeah, well, we could also consider that as sort of a soft opening um, where it gets sort of introduced and we can let people know that we're this is something we're going to build out and ask for greater participation across the community. Because I imagine the business community would want to, would have an investment in uh, supporting the culture of civility and the colleges. Laura, um, Claire? Go ahead. What about the idea of inviting the city council and the mayor to do it with us? To do what, Lori? Um, a big pledge undertake, signing? Undertake this campaign. Okay. So in a way, it's, it's kind of what you're saying, like a, like the idea of a soft launch. No, so, uh, mm -hmm. what's that called when they do a fundraising? Soft, uh, soft opening. open or something? Yeah, yeah soft yeah. opening. Anyway, it's just a thought to that circulate it among other people. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I mean, it would be good to do it with the city council and the mayor. Yes. I have a question. What, is, what does Elisa think about that? Um, Davina has got a question first, and then we'll oh. ask our liaison. Uh, is there any other way? There's no other way to get feedback from the city council except presenting it to them, is there? That's correct because of open meeting law. You could, yeah. If you That's sent right. it to more than three members, yeah. um, they would be we couldn't, or yes. four members, we couldn't really talk That's about right. it amongst ourselves. And so you would only be getting, I mean, you could send it out to a few targeted individuals and have conversations with them and ask you know, them not to talk amongst each other. You could do that. I don't think we particularly want to do that. I think we want to get it to the whole city. In, in some ways, presenting it to the city council in the summer is almost like a soft opening. It is. Yeah. You know, because it's a very, very much quieter time. I love the idea of getting this thing ready and to go for fall. With the kids coming back in school and everything, I think that's a great idea. So, in a way, you know, getting the kinks out of it during the summer is not a bad idea. But I think, I understand your point. Once you present it to the city council, we need to be ready. 
because then it'll, it, you know, it could be in the paper, it could be anybody can look at it, it you know. But that's not a bad thing. Just, um, what is it that we're asking the city council for advice on this? I thought the advice was going to be, what does it mean to stand with people, sort of the toolkit stuff? Is there something else that we're asking for advice on this about? I didn't think it was advice so much as um, getting co-sponsorship. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if it's co and I imagine that if we pass this and we went to city council and says we would like you to adopt this, that's what we would get. Yeah, I think I the advice sort of, comes on the second part. I would love their advice or their input of helping us launch it. I think that's what I was thinking about the launch. You know. So it's not about further wordsmithing this document. No. Or anything like that. It's really about the launch. One of the things that you could think about, I suppose, is bringing it to the Community Resources Committee of the City Council to, and you could do that on the floor of the committee meeting and have a pretty robust discussion about what some of the ways are to disseminate this and you know get community involvement. And you could do that as a step before it's introduced to the city council as something to vote on. And that would be just a good forum for discussion. As many members of this commission as could come to that meeting would be great. We could get it on the agenda of that meeting, so there's you know a half hour to talk about it, and then there could be that back and forth, and it would be it wouldn't be violating open meeting law because we'd be discussing it in that way, and it wouldn't take up a lot of time on the council floor without you know formation yet. So, Lori, Elisa is um, suggesting that we could bring this to the community resources committee of the city council before we bring it to the full council for um, for them to adopt. When do they meet? I'll find that out. I don't we have meet the se I'm on that committee. Oh, Lisa's so, on that committee too. Um, we meet the second Monday of every month, I think it is. It the must be second the third Monday. Monday. I have to, I so the second Monday, the which will be a week before the... We just had it last week, whatever that Monday was. Third, third, third Thursday. Third Thursday. Right. All right, Elisa will let us know about that. Okay. Can you repeat the name of it? I couldn't catch it. Community <laughs> Resources Committee. Okay. I'll tell you when the next meeting is. Did that committee used to have another name, or is it new? It's a brand new committee, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think one of the things that I heard, if I heard correctly, to being a suggesting is that possibly we could ask for commitments from counselors to hold events in their ward to... to the the meeting is on Monday the 19th of June at 5 o'clock in this room. And you would have to talk to the um, chair, and that's Julie Shera, and ask her to put it on the agenda. And is that enough time to ask for this to get on the agenda the following week? Most definitely. Most definitely. Okay. But what is the role of that committee? Or what does that committee do? Um, it discusses anything that has to do. It's this is brand new with the change of the um, rules of the city council. And so we split, we used to have many more committees. And so a bunch of committees fit underneath it. Um, there's city services and city resources. And there's a lot of discussion ongoing about what's a service and what's a resource for the city. But so far, what we have kind of identified for the, the city resources committee is issues related to the arts, issues related to transportation, which could be a service, um, um, anything that has to do, one of the committees that got collapsed into it was the Culture, Recreation, Arts Commission that we used to have, or committee that we used to have, so things of that nature, we're still trying to figure out, but it seems to me that this would be more related to resources than services. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking that committee would make more sense. Sorry, that was a very inarticulate <laughs> response to what you asked, but we're still kind of playing around with it. So Lori, at least I was just trying to um, describe what the work of the city resources committee is. So 
it's 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 brand new, so it's still developing. Uh, but it seems like the right place for us to bring this. Okay. One other question: Do we need to bounce this around with um, the chief of police? Because when we started these discussions, it was because of some information we were getting from the chief. Right. I, I, you know, I don't know. Lori Booker is asking uh, whether. We feel we should go to Chief Casper with this before we go to the City Council. Also, do if we should go to Chief Casper, yeah. What's your What's your thought? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, can we do it at the same time? Uh, tell me more with that. What you mean by that? Did you? So. Are we planning on going, having a couple of us go to the next meeting of this community resources committee? Yes. So then we could also make an appointment to go see the chief. Okay. Before we go to the city council meeting. Both of those things before the city council. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for thinking. Am I missing the point? No, I, the reason I asked Lori is, um, we, this, a lot of this started because of some discussions with Chief Casper yeah. about concerns of what was being reported. Um, well, I, my real secret reason for, I shouldn't have secret reasons. I, my reason for being concerned is I'm actually looking for more guidance about what, if Chief Casper will say, I'm concerned about what does it mean for somebody to stand with someone. And okay, I'm, would you mind like moving a little closer to Karen? <laughs> right um, sure now, I think it's tricky. <laughs> I'll have to ask my wife first. Um, it's oh, okay, that's good. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's Booker Pence. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like Mike Pence. Um, <laughs> um, I was concerned that Chief Casper might have concerns or recommendations about whether people are putting themselves at risk if they address um, victimization that they witness. Oh, okay. Well, well she I might... don't know about that, but I do know, whoops, am I interrupting you? No, go ahead. Okay, I don't know about that, but I do know that she does feel like, I mean, from my conversation with her on a number of occasions, that, um, to some degree, people want the police to do something they can't do. Right. And um, that she really likes the idea of the community taking this on as like, this is about our culture and how we treat each other. So, so it might be helpful then that if we speak with her, she might say, boy, I really like that you're doing this and I would like to support you. Yeah, she might. I think it would be a good, uh, an, at least a courtesy to let her know before we make it public. Yes, I agree. Yeah, we'll get better buying. Yes. Okay. Um, In fact, I mean, Karen. Yes. Um, one thing we we did vote to endorse. We we approved this, right? So this is a public action that we took. I mean, you could just, as the chair, email her and send her a copy, and say, you know, we had conversations with you a few months ago, and mm -hmm. based on that, we had this process, and we adopted this, and. Now we're going to figure out what to do with you from here, but just so you know, this is what we've done so far. What made the harm of that? Yeah, sure, that may be better. Um, we don't, I don't necessarily need to take up her time. Well, I think, we ought, we, I, I think we ought to offer to. Yes. Oh. You yeah. know, if you'd like to speak with us, we'd be more than happy to, but we're not saying, hey, we got to talk to you before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It will be at her convenience. Uh, and Elisa, uh, you think we, I should contact Gina Louise and bring it to that committee before not, Dr. Speaker? I, I mean, not necessarily. I just wanted to put that out as a, one of the possibilities if we want to have more discussion that wouldn't be violating open meeting law before it was actually brought to the city council as a resolution asking to be sponsored. So it's really up to the commission whether or not it's a useful step. Uh, 
it feels useful to me to at least have um, to build, start building a relationship with counselors. Um, so if it won't take up too much time on the agenda, I will ask you to waste some time. You'll alert all of us by email, and those of us who can attend will attend. Sure. And we don't need to discuss it. Yeah, so just know the date in case you want to put it in the calendar. Yeah, uh, June 19th. 5.30 or? 5.30. Yeah. Okay. And you might also find the people you'd like to ask to co-sponsor it. Because the way that the, the it would be brought to the council ultimately is that you would need at least one, if not multiple, co-sponsors from the city council to address it on the council floor, to introduce it on the council floor. Well, I think um, I think I would probably ask uh, Council President Dwight, ask the council president and who sets the agenda. Does he set the agenda or does the, yeah, he does mm -hmm. for the council, yeah. So I think I would approach him unless other folks think there's a better choice. Target this for the second council meeting in June for the soft launch, the soft open. The uh, second council meeting in where? In June. Oh, okay. So the third Got Thursday. Um, at that time, we can we can have the resolution on paper, and we also have um, we One, have the attorney right. general's hotline phone number, I don't, we, which we could. Uh, hand out in addition to the resolution at that time, or we could hold off on that until we do a bigger launch later. I'm, look, I'm looking at dates. I don't follow the city council, but if the city council meets on the third Thursday of the month, they will be meeting on the 16th. Is that correct? Third Thursday? Uh, the third yes. Thursday, that's yeah. true. So that's before that meet, next meeting, before the community resource. Right. That's okay. It is, it just means that we won't get it until the July, the first July meeting. Is there a July meeting of the city council or do they take off? Um, I think we only have one in July. Um, so if you're gonna, if we've made a decision that you want um, the city council president, Council Dwight, to be the, the person who introduces it, First of all, I think it would make more sense to have more than one sponsor. We try to have just because then you already have the votes right there with two or three counselors. Um, so that, I, I, I think it's a little bit backwards. I, it makes sense to me that it would go to the, the um, City Resources Committee first right. for discussion and for ideas about what makes the most sense for how it's going to be introduced on the council floor. So. That's my opinion about that one. So, um, is it is it not possible for you to act as sponsor if you are also liaison to? No, I think I can. Um, but it might be useful to before I commit to it and before we commit to maybe even uh, Councilor Dwight being a co-sponsor to talk about that with the the the. I mean, city resources. Yes, the yeah. city resources committee. Sorry, I'm tired. Okay. So we're Will you recap that, please, for okay. Lisa. So, Lori, I think that this is where we're at. I think that um, Elisa is schooling me a little bit on municipal politics and how these how resolutions work in council, and um, they generally have support or co-sponsorship of more than one counselor um, before they get to the floor of the council for a vote. Uh, so, Elisa is suggesting that we. Uh, bring this to the city it's called the committee, committee on community resources committee on community Official resources yes. um, to talk with them and to invite co-sponsorship among those members and then ask councillor dwight and that puts us at the july city council meeting for our initial soft introduction and it gives us the okay. summer 
to plan how we want to launch it big in, in September. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. You got that, Joel? The best I can. <laughs> so and we'll see what happens. Does, is there an advantage to invite every city councilor to co-sponsor with us if they want to? You can't. Uh, we can't it because violates open, open meeting, meeting laws. laws. We can't ask them to. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Got it. You can have more. You could technically have four, but we have a policy of only having a maximum of three, especially if it doesn't include the count city council president, because um, if you have four people that already are talking about it and agreeing to sign on to it, you're right at that threshold of um, violating quorum and open meeting law. Did you get that, Lori? No, say it again. Okay. Um, yeah. So they, they tried to get a, a maximum of three co-sponsored uh, counselors uh, because if you have four counselors who are already talking about and agreeing to sign on to something before it comes to the public floor, it's uh, it means you we're very close to violating the... Um, oh, okay, that makes law. sense. Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Okay. All right. So we have a plan. I will let people know when I hear back from Gina Luis and um, and we'll go from there. And I am hopeful that this is not going to be just a, a resolution in name only. That will just that we will just say be civil, everybody, and and um, drop it there. I would like us to actually do something with this, you know, to have, to invite, as Christine said, the community to participate in a meaningful way. And uh, I think that that might be a good um, center of conversation for our next meeting. Unless there are people who would like to take on some work as a subcommittee and put some ideas together to bring to next meeting. Don't we already have a subcommittee? We have a subcommittee that came up with the um, the language. I'm not sure if Lori and Joel want to continue action planning or not. I couldn't hear that, Karen. So Try it again. Okay. So we have um, we have a hope to do more than just pass this resolution, but to actually have some community engagement with it. So we're going to spend some time in the next month or two coming up with a plan to... Yeah, that sounds great. Right, so we can have that conversation in the next Human Rights Commission meeting, or we, I'm asking if there's a subcommittee of people who would like to put together some ideas in advance of that that gives us a place to start at our next meeting. Well, I'm kind of hoping the Community Resource Committee will maybe have some input. You know, I mean, otherwise, why are we going to them? So I maybe also, perhaps I, also, I have a preference that we not form another subcommittee mm -hmm. and that we plan that at the next meeting we will talk about how we will further push this. Mm -hmm. Hey, Booker, can you lean forward but don't get closer to Karen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a, a proposal that rather than making another subcommittee that we plan at our next meeting to have a further discussion about how this plan will be rolled out because by then we will also have some additional exactly. input from other places and I think um, I've actually done discussions within parts of my faith community about what if we had something like a stability pledge what would people want to do? How would people want to work with it? And I imagine that if many of us sort of push that idea around in other places, we might get some other ideas of what to do. Okay. Yeah. And we don't have, um, you know, I don't have any other major items coming up for the next couple months agenda that I'm aware of, unless there's something that, we, that arises that we'll need to respond to. Uh, so I'm very comfortable dedicating the majority of our next meeting to really um, engaging in working groups on on how we want to bring this to life in the community. So 
in between now and then, if you have some ideas, just come prepared to share those with all of us and uh, some ideas for who we might also partner with in the city. Um, Karen? Yes. Um, I just have to say, um, I can make the um, meeting, the Committee on Community Resources, I can make that meeting, but I'm going to be in Maine again the last week of June because I have a family wedding. Okay. So I will have to miss that meeting. Okay. But I can put my ideas forward. Thank you. You'll, yes, get those to me um, in advance. Okay. And if sorry about that. That's okay. If you're not in the middle of toasting the, the happy couple, we, we can zoom you in again. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to get a better computer or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is this has not worked terribly. It, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that that wraps this part up. Unless anybody else, anything else on this? Okay. So do you mind if I hang up now? We're good. Thank you for being here. Right, thank you. you for being so patient with me. Thank you, Lori. It's good that your voice was in the room. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And we're actually kind of almost on time, so this is really remarkable. Um, so I wanted to check in with people on summer schedules. I'm aware that um, some people go away in the summer. Uh, and if we know now that we're not going to have a quorum for particular weeks, <laughs> it would be good to know. So does anybody, I do have plans. I will be away for two weeks in July. I'll be um, in a conference in July too. Okay. What are the dates? Um, well, what would the date of our meeting be? I the 17th. Okay. July 26th. Is what I have for mm -hmm. this meeting. I think I might be back. Yeah. I I will be away on the 26th of July. Okay. I don't know. I forgot my phone. It's like I feel completely <laughs> in the dark. I've got all my. Yeah. yeah. I know we're going on vacation in July and August sometime, but I don't know the dates. But okay. I think Wednesday I'm I'm okay. It's usually Thursday. Okay. So I I, I should be fine. August will definitely be fine. I'm leaving for two weeks in the end of August. Okay. We leave on the 18th. We're the fourth on Wednesday of yes. every month. Is that what it is? Yes. yes. That's August 23rd. I'm taking that week off from work, but it's not definite that I'll be back in between August. Wednesday and August. Oh, okay. So okay. it's possible. Um, if we think that we're going to launch an initiative in September, then I would suggest that we take July off and come back to work in August if we're going to uh, suspend our meeting for one month or the other. That would put us working on August 23rd. You Do we know for a fact that we don't have quorums for both of those meetings? Is that what we came up with? I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't know what Lori's. I'm going to have to ask Lori to chair the June meeting. I mean, July meeting. Joel doesn't know yet. And we have to find out about Brian. Um, I just am concerned that we're going to, it's going to need more than one meeting to really flush out. So I think if we do have a quorum, we should do both July and August. Even though it won't be the same group of people, we'll be able, we'll try and carry the ideas forward. Good thing about launching the campaign in October too. Mm -hmm. We can find a date and then know that September is. I am worried that only one meeting would be enough. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get a general sense of the summer where it is right now, and yeah, so that we can come back to that in June. And if people's plans have changed or solidified, we'll we'll know whether we can have meetings or not. Is there any new business that anybody would like to bring? I hate to say it, but I have something. Um, plus, National Civility Day is in November. Oh, 
by the way. But the, I have uh, one quick thing. I'm just wondering if, um, Karen and I talked about this briefly, but I'm wondering if people want to continue to entertain the idea of um, proceeding with looking at the policy platform of the Movement for Black Lives. Should we have it on agendas or should we suspend it for a while? Um, just wondering if people have a feeling about that. It sounds like we have our work cut out for us in the campaign for the next while. So we can put it on the agenda just to talk about next month too. If people don't, you know, we don't want to have any discussion about it now. My observation thus far has been that it, this is an item that gets booted agenda to agenda to agenda. So that makes me think that it's, the form is not well suited to this group because we move in and out of other agenda items fairly quickly and easily. So I'm wondering what other form this committee could take to tackle this and it, perhaps this is a subcommittee better served in a subcommittee. I didn't mean to start a whole discussion here, Karen, as a, since you're the chair. I don't know if we want to, you know, like have this kind of discussion as an agenda item next time, because it might require more discussion. Yeah, I, I have also noticed since I started that it, it appeared on agendas and we often would not get time to, for it. And I did not put it on this agenda because I, I feel it's, um, I feel it's a really important topic and worthy of a devotion of our amount of our time, and it hasn't been getting that. So I agree that going through the the movement platform one by one may not be the right way for us to engage it. I would like to um, not lose it though. So tell me all what your thoughts are as you go home and reflect on this, uh, and I'll be setting the next agenda in about two weeks, so. How do you want me to put that on a new business? I, I hesitate in putting it on there. We're no longer going to discuss black lives. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is, is see, um, is to explore how we can engage the, pla the movement for black lives. Okay. That's good. We can Keep in mind the strategies that we said are our strat are available to us. And so where the sweet spot might be. Try to put that in a minute. Yeah, got it. No problem. <laughs> Piece of cake. Um, Karen, I have one more new agenda item. All right, I'll possible. use my privilege though to just for a moment, thank you, uh, thank you, Carla, again for helping us get those T-shirts for oh, wonderful. the yeah, it's great. Pride Parade. I saw you marching by with the church wearing yours. Yes. Okay. Well, you were off to the side wearing yeah. yours. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and photos. So I um, won't spend a lot of time on this if people aren't um, interested, but I think it's important for the commission to at least know that. Um, ICE, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, has been, uh, just yesterday, was in Northampton trying to make two arrests. And uh, people probably know that the Pioneer Valley Workers Center has created a rapid response movement um, called Sanctuary in the Streets. 400 people have been trained, ready to go. Um, they did find out about it as it was happening. One person was, they attempted to arrest somebody in Hampshire Heights um, and then went to Smith College when they couldn't find that person who doesn't actually live there but had given that address because they borrowed a car of a friend who lived there and had an accident, which is why there was a police report on it. They did, so they did not find that person there. They're continuing, we think, to look for that person. They then went to Smith College looking for a student that is no longer on campus. But I just felt like it, this is an important place for us to be following um, what is happening with that, with ICE and coming into the city. Um, it wasn't a broad sweep, it was targeted attempts at arrest. And um, just to put that out there, whether or not we as a commission, or you I should say as a commission, are interested in maybe talking about this as an agenda item at the next meeting to see if there's some role that the Human Rights Commission wants to play, whether it be 
you know, hooking up with the Pioneer Valley Worker Center and the Sanctuary in the Streets movement or anything else to um, address this because there is a lot of indication across the country that this is really stepping up. The fact that they were here doing these targeted attempts at arrest means that Northampton is very much on their sights. They expanded the ICE uh, presence in, a, in the federal office in Springfield, so they're right here in western Massachusetts operating out of Springfield, so there's just a lot of indication that we may be dealing with this as the summer progresses. I just signed up for their next training in June, 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 June. so June 2nd, if anybody is interested. Is that open to everyone? You have to cap. sign up because there's a cap at 100. Yeah. It's in Holyoke on June 2nd, and it's a three-hour training in the evening. Have you seen anything in the press about this? Was this? It hasn't hit the press. It's no, I haven't heard it. I've heard. I've heard. I heard it yesterday because my mom's involved, and, and they called her because she lives near Hampshire Heights, and they were like, keep an eye out. I just want to say I appreciate you sharing that. I have heard, and I, I do feel we should be involved. I mean, if, I mean, maybe that should be the agenda. I mean, what role we can play. I mean, to me, it's a simple thing to say. Why is the press covering this? Um, or is, it, is, is there a reason why it isn't public? Because um, then that starts the discussion. Any other new business? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs>